in the previous lesson, we went into Photoshop and we tweaked the color settings. And that's good. Now Photoshop kind of has an idea of what we're going to do and where we're going. The next step is this thing right here, calibrating your monitor. Now let me go ahead and open something up while we're talking here. I'm talking about using something called a spider, S-P-Y-D-E-R. Spiders are electro-optical measuring systems. And yes, they do cost money. They're, you know, something you have to buy. They cost about, oh, $100 US. Now the one I'm using, and they're all pretty similar on how they work, but I'm using a Spider Pro 4 right here. The reason I like this one is it has actually an electrical optical system in the body of the spider that measures ambient light in the room and basically controls what you see on your monitor even based on the lighting you're using. So that's actually pretty cool. Now if you try to do this manually, the reason it's not going to work, no matter how good your eyes are, there's just too many variables on how we perceive color. To really get it right, you do need something like this. The good news is, is you can use it on as many monitors as you want. You don't have to buy one for every monitor. So that's kind of nice if you work in an office setting or you've got a school where there's a lot of them going on. You will want to recalibrate about once a month. Now some of the things you want to do, and it's telling it to you right here, like warming up your display. Now I get up pretty early, but before I have that first cup of Java or do anything else, I turn all the systems on in my studio to give them a chance to warm up. Reach over right now and just feel your monitor. It's warm, isn't it? That temperature change actually impacts how we see colors. So we need to let our monitor warm up for about a half hour, they recommend. The lighting conditions, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But in lighting conditions, you don't want direct lighting on your monitor. But you also want to make sure that the lighting that you're using to calibrate your monitor is the same lighting that you're using when you're working. Makes sense, doesn't it? Display controls. What are those? Most monitors don't have them anymore, and as far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. Like if you've got anything that's like a Macintosh cinema display, there's no buttons on there for brightness and contrast. Most monitors don't have those. If they do contain those type of things, you're going to have to do some manual work. So I'm kind of glad they're not there, at least in most cases. And then plug the thing in. Okay, this is really just like point and click. Just answer the questions. If we go to next, I am using an LCD, and it's telling me right now, it's one of these two. I've got two on there right now. I'm going to calibrate this one. Click next. Now it did nail it. It's an LG, and that is the number of that display. If it doesn't work, probably will. You can click here and go to whatever you've got. Click Next again. Now for gamut, I would suggest starting with normal. And here's the thing. I could be working on the same monitor as you, but there might be a slight difference on how you're going to put your settings together. This process, the first time you do it, in my opinion, is going to take a couple of hours. Maybe you don't have to do it all in the same day. But what I'm suggesting is do more than one calibration using different options. Do some test prints and things that you're going out to and see which one works best. But I would suggest starting with normal. Your backlighting on your monitor can be, well, can be a lot of different things. On this monitor, it's white LED. Some use fluorescence. Again, it should nail it for you. It should get the right one. But if you're not sure, get into the manual for the monitor or maybe go out to their website, check it out just to make sure you're using the right one. Click Next again. Now you see, this is where, if you've got them, you have to turn these on. And when you do, then you're going to have to adjust these settings based on the suggestions of the software. So that's one step most of us don't have to do. Click Next. Okay, and here I would recommend that you leave these alone for the first test. It's saying a gamma of 2.2. White point, 6500, which is recommended. That's kind of where white is. Native, in my case, would be the same because this monitor does use 6500 Kelvin for white point. Brightness, good to recommend it on that one. Now, this feature is because of my spider. It has the ability to check the ambient light. I do like that. And I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, do that. It's telling me which one of the monitors I want to do. I've already got that checked on. It tells me the last time it was calibrated. Click Next. Now when I click next again, this is a step because of this spider, it is actually going to check the ambient light in the room as I'm working right now. And it's telling me, here's my brightness and white points based on the light. Do you want to use them or keep the current settings? I would suggest using them just to see what it does. You click next again, and that's where you put the spider. 
just like a little outline right there. You stick that bad boy on there. You click next again, and it takes about 10 minutes. It looks at the colors, and it actually analyzes them. The monitor will send, say, the color red to the spider. And the monitor then says, spider, this is pure red. Spider goes, I don't think so, but I'm going to adjust you until I see a perfect red. Now, show me another red. Show me a green. Show me a blue. That's what it does. At the end, you have a calibrated system, which means that when you're calibrating colors in a photograph, as you're looking at it, the colors on your monitor represent mathematically the colors that are going to be sent to the output device. It's a very important step in the color workflow. And once you do it, you should do it about once a month. Things change. Monitors get old. All kinds of things can happen. But spider calibration is a very important part of the process. If you can do it, I totally recommend it.